Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Leon from Victory Lutheran Church in Mesa, Arizona. Welcome to Daily Hope. I love the title of these devotionals because we all so desperately need hope and we need it on a daily basis, especially when we're in the throes of grief. Grief is a multifaceted thing in our lives. We often assume that it's only the result of the death of a loved one, but grief is the result of many things. The loss of health or mobility, the loss of a spouse through divorce or mental impairment, even the loss of a job or the death of a dream. It's usually most acute when we suffer the death of a loved one. I've rarely heard such an eloquent witness to that grief than one I found from Renee Olson, now a grown woman who was a high school student when I served my first congregation. Renee and her husband Ron were in a terrible car accident about a year and a half ago. Ron died that day, and Renee suffered serious injuries. I've shared a short snippet of her story before. Today, I'd like to share an edited version of the reflections she posted on the one-year anniversary of Ron's death. Renee doesn't rationalize, apologize, or paper over the terrible pain of grief, but she holds it in close juxtaposition to the hope and comfort she's found in Jesus Christ. She writes this, I've had many days leading up to the first anniversary of Ron's death to marinate in the loss, sorrow, and grief that encompasses my existence, left behind without my other half. I've been changed and am changing. I'm no longer a wife. I'm a widow. I'm no longer a business partner. I'm a sole proprietor. I'm no longer part of a parenting team. I'm a single mom. I'm no longer a we with the purpose and dreams of the future. I'm an I with an identity crisis. Deep feelings of loss, uncertainty, uncertainty, imbalance, fear, trouble, and confusion flood into each day, and I continue to try and build a wall that can hold it all back. But I cannot construct such a wall. I'm not in control. I need Jesus. I need to recall his promises to hold tightly to his word and live by faith. Jesus was with us as we traveled to Watertown that night. I can imagine God's own sorrow knowing what was to come. Jesus was with us in the moment of the collision through the hour we were trapped in the car, in the moment I was rescued, and certainly Jesus was holding Ron as he breathed his last earthly breath and opened his eyes to heaven. Jesus was with me during the night in the hospital where I was oblivious of my circumstances. He was with our children and family as they waited, and he was with me the moment I became aware of Ron's passing when the darkness settled around me. Without a doubt, Jesus was with me in each moment. He carried me. He held me up. He's still walking with me. Jesus has already gone before me and prepared a way he will reveal glimpses of light in this darkness until I see daylight again. I trust him. I stake my future on his promises and the words of scripture. I've experienced his faithfulness. The constant help in times of trouble is God, from Psalm 46. Who are we that God loves us so much? Who are we that he died for us so that we could live with him forever? Who are we besides needy and selfish and sinful? We are loved. We are special. We are created in God's image for a purpose. We are cherished. We are children of God. And as believers in Jesus Christ as Lord, we have his spirit to lead us and guide us all the days of our lives and into the eternal promise of heaven. Jesus, our refuge, our strong tower, our light in the darkness. We can count on his strength, his comfort, his peace. Renee goes on, every day is a new opportunity to walk in his ways, to love one another, to praise him and to experience his joy, even in difficult circumstances. He will not leave us nor forsake us. My life is forever changed, but I have life, I have Jesus, and I have hope. I trust in Jesus who is and how he will write the rest of my story. Though challenged it will be, 
I know God is faithful and God is good. She concludes by offering this blessing to all of us and sharing some words from the Apostle Paul. May you also trust in him for each day's practical, physical, and spiritual needs. Trust in Jesus for your future, for your life everlasting. Surrender your control. God is big enough, strong enough, worthy enough, and compassionate enough for all of us. Paul writes this, I can do all things which he's called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. From Philippians 4. Jesus bless you. Signed, Renee. Thank you, Renee, for your eloquent and powerful witness to Jesus Christ. May God continue to grant you the strength and peace that you need. And dear friends, have a blessed day, knowing that you are loved and you are never alone. Mm -hmm.